Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh A new episode in Family Issues This episode is I think to my mind very matching with Ramadan because it's completely away from materialistic and financial um, high technology aspects and domains it's completely related to the non-materialistic and to the spiritual aspect of life nowadays you hear every now and then about so many of the modalities of treatment of problems nowadays you hear about yoga you hear about emotrans about Ricky homeopathy all the non-traditional non-western ways of medicine that deal what's called the alternative medicine that deal with the problems of humans with their anxieties with their worries so I think it's very ideal to speak in Ramadan days uh, while we are fasting. Fasting is a training exercise and lesson to help you to be more spiritual than materialistic because when you have food, this food has to be digested. It takes from the blood of the brain and therefore you lose concentration. You lose focusing. So when you are fasting all the blood is going to your brain so you think more deeply so by the way fasting is a very healthy way to touch the non-materialistic aspects of life um, by the way it's one type of worship it's like prayers fasting and uh, prayers are certain or different types of worship but there is a very famous way of worship which is meditation. Meditation is worship. It may be, it is found in other religions. It's maybe one single unit or type of moda or modality of treatment by other people. But it's present in every religion. You have to ponder and look at the sky and stir at the sea and see every natural think and think about it it's it's to to not to see but to look at what you see to look at what you see it's not just visual things that move in front of your face it's deeply seeing and feeling and thinking about what you see so it's very important today to speak about contemplation meditation pondering look at the sky look at the universe Train your children to do this. Make it a daily exercise. Um, let, me, let me be frank. Sometimes I see um, in the, in the uh, drama uh, series in the TV, um, our brothers, the Christians, when they start eating or dining, they hold the hands of each other and pray to God and thank Him. It's a way. It's a way of meditation. It's a way of connection with God, so we respect this very well. Any religion, any person, any father, any raiser, or anyone who is a caregiver has to train his children to connect with the other world, the other, as I say, non-materialistic world. Reciting Quran, for example, or praying, or wudu, the washing that Muslims do before they pray. Unfortunately, most of the, the Muslims who perform these things do them in a physical way, in a bodily way. He prays, he says, Allahu Akbar, and he puts his hand and he prays in this way. It's some sort of motor, motor uh, uh, steps. Raising your hand, putting your right hand on your left hand, and making sujood, making ruku, all, all the, 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 well, the famously well-known move, movements of prayers. 
And the same thing applies to reciting Quran. They do them, they do these things without the other dimension. We are now in the, in the, in the uh, era of the 4D and the 3D uh, uh, films and tackling of uh, the picture in a very uh, accurate way and in a very good way. So let us open this dimension in our children, which is the spiritual way. Reciting Quran, reciting Quran is not just reading things. In spite of having good things from God while reading, even if you are distracted or not concentrating or absent-minded, but if you are minded in what you do or you train your child, and therefore uh, so many uh, times I tell people when they go to prayers, Here, here the Imam, when he says, he says a very common word that's said in every prayer. He says, please try to live the condition, try to live the situation. He says this, everyone, in every prayer. Uh, please feel the greatness of God in your hearts before you start praying. Unfortunately, no one, even those people who hear just the sound, do not explain to themselves or feel the condition Or what's the meaning of what the man says? He says, take care. We are going now to connect with God. So please, disconnect the mobiles. Disconnect from life. Disconnect from any materialistic thing. And just as much as you can, train yourself. This is like meditation, like yoga. People are admiring so much the way the, those with yoga play and they hold their hands like this and you put their cross legs and things like that. All the, the famous things. I respect this. And the Boudian ways and other ways. All the types of people try because this makes balance in the human being between the material and the spirit or the soul and the body. Okay? But in Islam, in Islam, what I'm now speaking about is that so many people unfortunately do. I ask those with yoga sometimes. So I told them, what's the difference between yoga and prayers? Because they think that this is a good way of meditating and connecting with God and this makes and so many Muslims do this do the yoga exercises okay in order to live in order to, to feel psychologically pure and free they, they deeply uh, inspire air and deeply exhale it inhale it and exhale it and they feel they say to you when they go out wow this is marvelous we feel e at ease after doing these exercises The point that I want to tell them is that when I ask those with yoga, some of the Muslims who train others for yoga told me, if, you, if you're asking about the difference between yoga and prayer, then prayers only can do what yoga do does when people are focusing at God. But unfortunately, those who pray, they pray by their bodies. And this reminds us with the common story that happened in front of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, when he was sitting in the mosque and the man came and he was praying um, as if he is making a race. He said, Allah Akbar, put his hand, going down and up very rapidly, very hastily, and salam alaikum, he finished the prayers. Prophet Muhammad told him, repeat it again. Repeat the prayers again. You didn't pray. This is not praying. Why? Because... The man thought that prayers is some movements. No, it's, it's a situation that you live. It's a condition that your psychology goes in. This is a connection with God. If you, therefore, I, I want to tell everyone when he goes to prayer in, in, in the group prayer, in jama'ah prayer, in the mosque, of course we insist on getting at the time because this is the time with God at the moment. But when the man says Allahu Akbar and starts the prayers, do not... Be hasty. Say Allah, of course, but before you say, just try as much as you can huh, to feel the condition, to live with God. Now I'm in front of God, okay? In front of me is, for example, the Kaaba, the place where Muslims go and do pil pilgrimage. Um, and as one of the people said, when I, when, I go, when I go to pray, I first go to the WC, of course, and make wudu. When I, when I clean myself, I clean in a way that I feel sacred, the water is sacred, and it's getting out my bad, uh, my bad things and deeds, and the sins are getting in the sink, huh? 
and then go uh, in a way to the place of prayer from the from the WC to the way to the place where I pray I go silently and in a way that as if I'm in a holy place okay even if I was not in the mosque and I imagine before I start to say Allahu Akbar the beginning of the prayer I imagine that in front of me is the Kaaba okay and on my right is the paradise I think in paradise and the way paradise the trees and things I try to imagine this this is like imagery they call it imagery okay and I try to imagine that the hill and the fire is on my left side it's a condition you know and um, angels are above my head and all my faults and all my sins are sitting around me and when the man says Allahu Akbar I say Allahu Akbar and the, the, the straight path is under my feet can you, you collect all these things like hypnotism huh? and imagine that you are in this situation this is what we call meditation this is true prayer this is the true prayer it's not a game it's not an exercise it's it's a complicated situation that if you to my mind if you cannot try to be in this situation to my mind I'm not going to say do not pray better but this is true prayer and he says when when I start prayers I read the Quran as Muslims used to do the verses the Fatiha and so on and I'm imagining what I'm reading or what the man is reading huh? and I do all the movements of prayers slowly after the man after the Imam and I'm thinking in every movement and I'm imagining myself for example in the tomb or going to the hill or living in paradise and I'm doing them politely silently until the end of the prayer I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the end of the prayer the, the way Muslims salute together assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and assalamu alaikum on the left side huh? and after this th- this is the, the surprise after all this all these complicated focused movements he says I don't know after all this does God accept this prayers or not I don't know is God is going to accept it or not? Compare, compare this, this very sacred way, this very complicated way, this very serious man who takes prayers as a way of connection through cable of communication and compare him with a man who is taking the problem, the, the point as a light thing. He's just making the duty. He should pray five times per day. No, this is not the psychology of worship so prayers reciting Quran doing anything I'm not a religious man I'm not as I've said all the times I'm a professor in public health in behavioral sciences I'm a doctor I'm not a sheikh but from the psychological aspect of view from the point of view of psychologists when they speak about worship this is the way it's some sort of unifying unifying with the, the universal uh, powers out of the range of materialistic life. Anyway, let us continue speaking about this meditation condition or this meditation exercise that should happen every day. If you look at the Christians and the way they do these prayers, as I said, when they eat, it's some sort of an exercise. It's like what I mean. You should have five times of exercise. If you didn't train your children away, in addition, away from the five prayers, to sit with them and train them to, to think about, as I've said, other creatures, to look at the birds when they are flying, how they are flying. To think about yourself, look at yourself. Look at your hair, look at your eyes. Look at the eyes, how, how these eyes are like a very complicated camera zoom. Okay? how it is complicated, how this uh, uh, modification or this uh, um, way, complicated way of taking photos or shots to every view you, f- you face. And then it goes up to the brain and the brain analyzes the picture and then come back in the, this are called, uh, this are called the ascending and the descending or the efferent and the afferent nerves that come back with the impulse 
or the message to the eye and you understand what you see. You know that there is uh, one of the disorders in neurology called agnosia. What's agnosia? Agnosia is one of the tests by neurologists they do at their clinics. They, he puts, uh, for example, a pen in your hand. He says, close your eyes, okay, close your eyes, and he puts, for example, a key or a pen and asks you. This is one of the elements of the neurological tests that happen in the clinic. What's inside your hand? Do not, do not open your eyes. Some people cannot know because they're having agnosia. What's agnosia? Agnosia is you cannot understand what you feel. You cannot understand what you feel. Sometimes you cannot understand what you see. So sometimes you cannot understand what you hear. Let us have a break and then come back to continue our discussion. believe observing the fast is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may become pious again we came back to speak about the so-called meditation, imagery, hypnotism, pondering, contemplate, all these words that carry the meaning of connection with the non-materialistic life. It's very important, it's very healthy for everyone to have a dose, a dose, a daily dose of connection with God. Therefore, thank God in Islam, Muslims have five formal, five formal times to connect with God, to disconnect the cables, all the cables related to life, okay, and connect the other cables with God, all the cables. So those, those who are disconnected from God at this time, disconnected from God and connecting, connected to life, making their works, playing with their kids, eating food, leaving God, in the time of the meeting, the formal time of meeting, are losing so many things. Because this formal meeting carries its merits. It's very important. Of course, when you do the prayers at other times, you are connected too. But I think the impulses are less in the quality. They are not that pure as when all the people in the area are having the adhan and the prayer and connected. So, the point is, there are formal times to connect with God, to meditate through, through, through prayers, through, through wudu, through, through reciting Quran, through, through fasting during Ramadan. True fasting is to fast and meditate at the same time. Meditate at yourself. Look at your hand, as I've said. Look at your hand. Look at the creases. Oh my goodness. My fingers are different from each other. And I'm having fingerprints. I'm having my own soul, my own identity fingerprints that is different from the six milliard or the six, the, the, all the human beings around the ground. Every one of us has his own print, his own identity. So, you have to respect and you have to have, you have to respect God and you have to respect meditation and to give yourself a time. Every, every episode like this episode, every meeting with God, you have to think in another different thing. Sometimes I think about myself and look at my body and look about the hair, look about the nails, look about the fingers, look in my digestive system, look at this heart who is pumping, pumping since you were born, since 30 or 40 years. Think, look at the mirror and thank God. Look at the mirror and thank God. This is one 
situation, for example, for a day. Train your kids and your wife to think about yourselves in a day. One verse in the Quran says, one verse in the Quran says, look at yourself. Don't you see? Look at yourself. Don't you see? So there are many things that you can do. You are not a sheikh, as I've said. You are not an imam. You are not supposed to be having a job in this way. But this is the minimal, the minimal, a father should train his... I, I, think, I don't think it's difficult to have five minutes like the one the Christians do and other religions do in, in, in yoga. Huh? You have to sit with the children on the ground. Let it be after prayer. One prayer, not the five prayers, one prayer. Huh? For example, before they sleep, Elisha prayer, the last prayer, the fifth one, and you sit down with the kids on the ground and say, this time, think about, think about the crocodile. Think about uh, the lion and his hair and the eyes and his, his, uh, his teeth, the canines, and how they are very sharp and the size, and you can have a visit to the zoo after that, to, to, or have pictures. Some people say small or young children cannot sit for a moment to hear this. No, you can use flashcards, you can use dolls, you can imitate a lion and make the voice of a lion. Huh? You, can, you can live the condition. You can, you can let the child by <coughs> by the age of everyone, you can let him be trained. Every age has his own way to train him for imagery and to, tra- to train him to meditate for God. Um, also, I want to insist on a very important thing in Ramadan. Some people, the, those specialized in religion, insist on what's called al-dhikr. Al-dhikr means to remember God, to remember God by your tongue. All the time say words, use, Muslims used to say, for example, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, thank you, and so on. Okay, thank God. All these words, you, you see Muslims after they finish their prayers, are making on their fingers, uh, uh, tasbih, or things like this. These are ways to mention God by your tongue, and to remember God. It's not also, again, it's not a physical thing. All the time you find people very rapidly are making their tasbih, huh? and thank God, and it's like, a physical ceremony that they do after prayers. It's not like this. It's psychology. Tasbih. Tasbih. Or uh, uh, remembering God and saying the words that mention the name of God, which is a regular ceremony after prayer, is a very good psychological exercise for imagery. So when you find your child trying to imitate you like this, You get happy, but in the same time, you can tell him, easy boy, slowly, slow down. You are having nothing. He says, well, I'm going to see the the match of the football match. I'm going, my my friend is waiting for me. Okay, let us wait. He can wait for you for a while. You can, of course, leave him once or twice. You you, you shouldn't um, uh, uh, make him sad or make him uh, 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 frustrated by the prayers in order not to hate them. But in the same time, you have to make some sort of balance. Because when he finds you uh, saying subhanallah, 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 in a very rapid way, you are teaching him indirectly to not to imagine, not to connect with God. It's not a matter of moments. And those people feel so many times so many problems. But those people who keep in touch with God in a true way, in this, in this meditation way, and they are thinking in what they say, subhanallah, and he thinks in the whole universe. He, think, he thinks in the sky, in the moon, in the sun. Uh, this is a good exercise, and these people have less amount of problems, psychological problems, if you train yourself from, if you train your son from the very beginning to raise on this way, he's going to be from inside very calm. The same thing applies to your wife. Train your wife, And therefore we remember, of course, when Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, asked us all the time to wake our spouses when the adhan comes, specifically when all people are sleeping. This is in the down adhan, adhan al-fajr. You wake your wife and tell her, please go. Some people 
find their wives tired. And some wives find their husbands tired. If, I don't, I don't think, I'm not speaking from religious aspect, but the point is you want him to leave the condition. I think specifically at Al-Fajr, which is the down time, which is a very um, aflatonic, very aflatonic time when everything is silent, silence and purity, purity, no pollution, everything, the flowers are speaking, you hear some birds. This time, this very romantic time, if you live the condition in this time, it's different from other times. So, to those who are feeling sorrow or feeling afraid that when they wake their children, eight years and 12 years, well, let him sleep because I want him to grow and get taller so he doesn't ask him to go up. I think this is not the right way. Try as much as you can to waken your child, huh? even he, if, if he is having um, disease or something. In emergencies, of course, you can, you can leave him. But the usual, the general way is that you try to waken him up in this time. This is very good for his soul and for his spirit. Uh, one of the famous books uh, that was dealing with the building of the personality of our children is the one written by uh, uh, the very famous writers uh, 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 Nicola Grimes. She, she, Nicola Grimes was writing about how to imitate the animals and the nature in the way they pray and in the way they uh, live their lives and try to do this in humans. Uh, there is another book in the same meaning by Linda and Richard. All of them were tackling the same point, which is how to build the personalities of our children by imitating nature, by imitating animals, by imitating plants, by imitating trees. Because the laws that God put in these creatures or in these contents in the universe are sacred and they apply to all types of creatures, including human beings. So one of them was the, what's called the law of whales or the law of dolphins. What does this mean? Dolphins and whales in the depth of the sea or in the oceans, they swim in groups. They swim in groups together the whales and the dolphins. And the scientists detected by the ultrasonic waves and by special devices that all these whales sing songs together. They sing, they have their own special way of connection together by specific songs, okay? These songs, it seems that they understand each other and they move in the same way, together in the depths of the sea. So there is a way of connection, and it's a way of maybe meditation also. So why not we respect this and try to make a language for us to imitate those whales and to be a law for us to imagine and to think together in an unmaterialistic way. Let us have a break and come back to continue our talk. You are never alone. You are never alone. Young athletes. We're going to have three segments, and in this first segment, we're going to talk about warming up. In the second segment, we're going to talk about exercises. We're going to do them actually, and then just give you information of its benefits and for the body. Uh, the last segment, we'll be talking about healthy foods. Are you an athlete? Do you like sports, exercise, and outdoor activities? If so, be sure to tune in to Young Athletes, airing throughout this blessed month of Ramadan, and learn many new techniques on how to stay healthy, strong, and physically fit. It's a nice sport, like, it's so much fun. What can we do to improve our health in everyday life? What can we eat? Do you think warming up is important while practicing a sport? The entire staff at Hoda would like to wish you a wonderful and blessed Ramadan. You are never alone. You are never alone. 
Welcome back in Family Issues. We are speaking in Ramadan about imagery and about meditation and how we connect with God and nature without relating to materialistic things. Here in this program, the aim of the program, the goal of the program is to design an ideal family, to design balanced members in the family. Therefore, a very important thing if you are thinking about the balance issue, to be a balanced personality and to be balanced in relation with your wife and to have balanced sons and daughters, psychologically speaking, you have to imitate what Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, because he used since very young age to look at the nature and to look here and there at the trees, at the seas, at the rivers, at the sky, at himself, at the birds. Think about this life, why it, how it began and how it ended. He all the time thought about this, and I think all the prayers have done this, like Abraham. The same thing applies to Prophet Abraham. So the point is, if you did this on daily basis, you had a daily allowance of um, daily imagery or daily... Uh, speculation or thinking about the causes of this life and what other animals do, I think it's very healthy. And therefore, this was the name of the book of Linda Richard, which was called The Nine uh, Natural Laws of uh, Having Your Family Life in a Good Way. Um, those people who saw Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, was doing that, thinking and uh, speaking sometimes when, when, when Jabrail came to Prophet Muhammad, some people said he's crazy. These are attacks of epilepsy. This is schizophrenia. This is double personality. This is a psychological disorder. This is a psychiatric problem. No, it's not a psychiatric problem. It's the nature. This is the normal. Every one of us, you, when you, whenever you go out in the street, you find people speaking to themselves. To a certain amount, self-talk is healthy. You can talk with yourself. You can take yourself alone and ask questions and yourself is going to answer you. But where is the sitting? The sitting, for example, is on the grass, looking from the balcony. Not for girls going and coming, no. For the logic, how this world has been created. All these cars came from iron, and iron was kept in the ground. And companies go and get this iron out of the ground. And so many people work in order to have this iron and to make the cars, and the brains think to design cars. And there are so many designs of the brains, brains that help you make uh, cars, brains that make bridges, brains that make symphonies, Everyone has his own brain. Don't you think in these things? Don't you give yourself a chance, even a moment, five, five minutes a day, not to just see the people walking down in the street, but to look at the way they are walking, to think about the significance of the aim of every one of them. Where is he going? And from where he is coming? And why he is doing this? Is he right or wrong? All these issues... If you thought about them, you are going to be stable. And you are going to compare yourself with them. That was the main issue in the brain or the mind of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Let me have a short cut inside here and answer some emails that came to us from our friends. One of them, by a friend of the program, says, she, she's a girl. She says that she, she's having depression after the end of the exams of the high school. You know, nowadays it's the season of the high school. This is the highest certificate before university in the Arab countries and specifically in Egypt, in Cairo. But uh, let me ask her a question. I think any girl or any boy or any young man who feels this depression after the exams, definitely he's not having the imagery, the imagery or the, med the meditation issue that we are talking today about in this episode. I myself, my son, 
Muhammad, he is now 17 years old, and he is in the beginning of the high school. He is having only one year uh, to end the, the, this stage. He said the same words. He, he told me after the end of the exam, Papa, I'm afraid from the result. I told him, please, please, Muhammad, do not think about this again. You did what you can do. I asked him, did you exert the effort? I saw you. You exerted a great effort. And I respected you, and I told you this before. I respect you because you work, you worked hardly. Do not deal with the results. Just think now how to refresh, how to recreate, how to go to places, because you are, one month later, is going to in, be indulged again in the lessons and in the works again, because you are going to the end year of the high school. This is the job of a father. You have to be the hugging, the hugging body to your child. You have to tell him, calm down. And you have to let him exercise this, distract him from studying and homeworks and duties and assignments. Let him go to an open area. I told him, go to Sharm Sheikh, go to Luxor, go to Alexandria. I told him, go with your friends and try to be happy and look at the nature and think of God and do not look at the paper now because you exerted a great effort at the last, at the end of the exams and this makes some sort of a burden on the human soul. So if you did this and if you thought in this way that you have done what you can do, and leave the result for the one who is responsible for the result. It's a multifactorial thing, by the way. The results are controlled by your effort, by the psychological condition of the teacher, maybe the one who uh, takes the exam, um, by, by so many things, by political things, by educational factors. So do not bother. Let God do what He wants. Do not think about the result. And do not blame yourself if the result, unfortunately, no, not unfortunately. It's fortunately. If the result came bad, this doesn't mean that God doesn't like you or you are a loser. No. It means that this is the choice that God chose to you and definitely there is something good in spite of apparently having something bad in this. Apparently it seems that you are a loser or you had a bad result and you got depressed. No, do not get depressed. Say thank God. And do as we have said in the beginning of the episode, pray to God, but imagine during prayer that you are in front of God and paradise is on your right and the hills on your left and the angels around you or, for, or, or, or above your head and the Kaaba or the holy places in front of you and all your sins and faults around, surrounding you huh? and the, the, the straight path is under your feet. This is the true. This makes you feeling um, easily freed of these bad feelings and depression away from drugs and away from medical preparations. Um, another email by a friend who said that all my friends are not liking to speak to me. They don't like me and they got away from me. Again, I say, I don't know the age of our friend, but I want to tell his mother and his father to pay attention to the, to the child and to see why others are repelling from him and to tell him, to give him self-confidence and to compensate what others demolish or what others destroy and not to be themselves the, the main destroyers. You have in these conditions, to sit with your child and tell him who is the one who told you that you are bad, what did he say, okay, De comment, if you have a picture of him or you have something about him, you are going definitely to find something bad about that guy. So, he is not the proper guy. And you can distract him from this and tell him, what about your friend, his name is so and so. You can distract his attention from these friends to another one. Definitely, I think, 
at least one or two of the friends or someone from his relatives who is connected to him. But here comes to me a very important point, by the way, which is some personalities are having what's called attention deficit disorder. And these persons are adults. Adults. Um, they do not I think in an attentive way. And I think some of them also do not um, having meditation all the time. They do not have meditation. So they feel all the time loaded and distracted, inattentive, and their brains are busy. I remember one of our friends who is very successful, but is from this type. All the time she says, I'm always busy. I'm always busy doing nothing. You can understand? I'm always busy doing nothing. Some people are not tidy in the way they think. These people are like, you know, um, a chorale or uh, a group of musicians, okay, orchestra, and there is no conductor. There is no maestro. Everyone is very good in his place, but all of them are not in harmony together. Sometimes people, their minds are full of so many good ideas, and every part of the brain is working in full efficiency, but no maestro, no conductor that leads them together. These people, all the time you find them distracted, not paying attention to important things. I think imagery is a good exercise to such people, one of the ways that can train them to focus and consequently to think in a better way. So back again to the answer of the friend who is not having friends. Maybe if you thought deeply or you gave yourself a chance, you might find that you are not logic enough to see that other people have cons and pros, merits and dismerits. So some people are not good. This is related to them, not to you. So not everyone that goes away from me or I lose him means that I'm a bad person. No, maybe it's the opposite. The one who came away from me because I'm good, he went away. It's a philosoph philosophical way of thinking. Okay? And sometimes it's better for these people to go away from us. He doesn't deserve to be your friend. Let me come back and speak about what we are speaking about, about the non-materialistic connection. Remember the past, they used to speak about what's called telepathy, connection from so far away between people, spirits, without meeting each other or seeing each other. Some people take courses in this. Telepathy, telepathy, connection from far away. This is the same. At first, before you think about telepathy with people, think about telepathy with God. You, you, the one who is interested in telepathy and in hypnotism and in techniques, non-traditional or alternative medicine and th things like this, give yourself a chance and connect with God. God is there waiting for you. This is, again, I'm not speaking about religious work worships, I'm speaking about psychological backgrounds and repercussions in religion. So train your child and train your teenager and train your wife to give herself a chance not to think about the cars and to think about the visits and the duties and the responsibilities and wh what to feed so and, and, and what to do for the, uh, the other child. No, give yourself at least the five formal times in Ramadan specifically, to think about what's behind the material, not the material itself. Um, the dose, the dose of uh, imagery and the dose of this psychological connection with nature should be raised, in Ramadan at least. You should raise the dose because it's not logic to live in Ramadan and to leave Ramadan to go away and you are still eating what you eat and saying what you say and doing what you do. No, you have to be different. You have to be um, a cute person 
a person who um, sings with flowers, with butterflies, who feels what cats feel, who when the, when the wind comes and the trees go here and there, he feels as if he is a tree that go, goes here and there. Try to live with creatures and to connect with them and connect with nature. And after that, the highest meaning or the significance of all of this is connection with God. You are going to feel so much uh, rest and so much ease. You are going to feel very comfortable psychologically and bodily or physically. You are going to feel that you are relaxed so much. So, at the end of what we have been speaking about all this episode, we have to reach a conclusion. It's like a formula. Part of it is materialistic and part of it is spiritual. Part of it is a body and the other part is the soul. And now the 30 days of Ramadan are the time for the souls to be the supreme above the bodies. Pay attention to this and you are going to feel at the end of Ramadan relaxed and efficient. Thanks for God that he gave us Ramadan and thank to you for focusing with us today. See you next episode. Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are never alone. You are never alone. Through sorrow and through grief. Through happiness and peace. You are never alone. So now, as you long for your past. Prepare for your future, but knowing nothing's gonna last. You see, this life is but a road, a straight and narrow path to our final abode. So travel well, O Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And always remember, that you are never alone.